Welcome to the Conscious Pivot Podcast with international speaker, business mentor, best-selling author of Pivot, and your host, Adam Markell. The Conscious Pivot shares the stories and wisdom of people who have successfully reinvented some area of their business and personal life. You'll gain powerful insights into how you can fully embrace new opportunities, increase your performance, and master the art and science of innovation and resilience. So please join Adam as he guides you on your Conscious Pivot. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of the Conscious Pivot Podcast. I'm your host, Adam Markell. I'm so I feel so great to be back in the seat. We took a little summer break and uh, I'm in a different location actually right now, as you can see from the background, if you're watching it on YouTube, if you're listening, well, maybe you can tell from my voice that it's the morning. I've got my, my, <laughs> I've got my morning voice on and, uh, and my summer beard and I'm just so thrilled to be sitting in this seat again and especially to reemerge uh, and get back to doing what I love and to be with somebody that I've been in admiration of for a really long time, actually. I, I'm going to say it's probably at least 10 years at this point when, uh, let's go back to my pivot, uh, or at least the big pivot that I wrote the book about was uh, my days as a lawyer and not feeling great about my life and then deciding, hey, I don't know how long I can continue to do this without being, I don't know, turn into like a permanently miserable human being. And uh, I was searching. I was. I didn't know what kind of guidance or where to get it from. I didn't know if I'm supposed to go hire, a, you know, hire a psychologist and lie on a couch or go go to Bali or Fiji or someplace and meditate. I just didn't know what to do. But somehow I ran across this uh, this email, and uh, it had a beautiful name, Namaste. And I was living, you know, my Randy and I and the kids were living in New Jersey at the time, and I didn't think. I even had a concept of what namaste was. <laughs> namaste, what the heck is that? I had not, I had done yoga. I was a you know, meditator. I was a hardcore uh, city kid. And, um, and so this was a new word for me, but I opened up this email and there was what I'll call an affirmation. Maybe, maybe that wasn't the technical term for what it was. It felt like a poem and it was, it was just this, these beautiful words, beautiful, like, Poetry is a beautiful collection of words, and uh, it touched me. It touched me in ways that you know, I couldn't even articulate at the time. But I would say now, it was, it was reaching me in, in a place I would call my soul. And it was certainly in my heart. I had my heart open as I was reading it, but it was touching a deeper, even a deeper place than that. And I started to, uh, I, I just wanted to see these emails, so I subscribed. I did something, you know, back then. I was like, ooh, I subscribed to something. I'm a member, you know, and I was getting these emails <laughs> delivered. And I don't remember if they were daily or weekly, but I was getting these affirmations. In any event, the person who was behind this and would, had, was creating this, and I suppose even downloading what it was that I was reading, uh, is a woman, a woman by the name of Judy Whitcraft. And Judy, I've been... A fan of hers. I was telling her earlier, I've been a fan of yours for so long. And um, those emails, those affirmations were things that we shared with our kids. And our oldest daughter, Chelsea, was really the one that sort of felt the same way as I did. So she was one that was you know, reading those and we were sharing them with each other and with other family members and then even members of our community when we started to do the, the work uh, that we're currently doing. And I'm so, I just so feel incredibly blessed and lucky, fortunate in this moment to have Judy on the show and to be able to share, share what I feel about you, dear one. And uh, thank you. Welcome to the Conscious Pivot. This is Judy Whitcraft, everybody. Well, good morning, everybody. And I did not know that story. This is the first time I've heard that story too. And uh, so, wow. My, my, my little ego mind is going, oh, good. Okay, I'll get rid of my ego mind now and come back to you, knowing that the only thing that was working through me and is always working through me is the divine energy, whatever anybody wants to call it, universal energy, God, spirit, whatever it is, it's all the same for me. And it was working through me. And the things that you were reading, I never considered them poetry because I'm not a poet. I'm not a writer. I was just writing affirmative prayers that spoke to me. 
but I did it in a practical way. I don't use a lot of flowery words. Like you say, it touched, it touched your soul because they were, they were words that made sense to you. So whenever I write or do any affirmative prayer, it's that way that it, it's really about the person and their and what they're living. And basically everybody has the same thing they want is to, uh, what, what you teach is to love your life. That's all anybody wants. They just look at it different ways. Indeed. So thank you. <laughs> you know, thank you. I mean, the words, I hear this a lot and, and I've said it in, in many times, many times in my life that we're, we hear just what we're meant to hear at the time that we're meant to hear it. So those words, like you said, they were just really perfect for me in those moments. But, um, but I've over the years just come to admire so deeply how rich all those affirmations are and how different they are. There are themes, there are commonalities, there's things that you could, you know, you could see how they, they relate to one another, but they're all so independently beautiful. It's like if you went into a field of flowers, I'm really going to like your ego, if it was wherever, whatever size it was when we began, Judy, we're about to double it. Okay. <laughs> let's double it. Two exit, right? Three exits. It's like walking through a field of flowers and, and at a glance, they're all, they're all similarly beautiful. But upon deeper examination, if you look at each one of those flowers, they're all unique. They're all incredibly beautiful in their own way and, and not just carbon copies of each other. And that's those affirmations that you wrote for so, so long. You know what? You're a pivoter just you know, in, in sending us some information, preparing for the the interview today, I, I read a bit about you. I'd love for you to share, if you could, a bit of your history. Because you've had a, in many ways, a, I would say sort of a conventional business background, an entrepreneurial background. And so I want to understand, or at least I, I would love for our, our viewers and listeners to know, you know, what led you through your life uh, as, a, as a person that ultimately ended up being inspired to share those affirmations. So take us back as far as you want. You can take us back to birth if you like. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, actually, that's a good place to start because at birth, I was adopted. And I was adopted before I was born. Whatever comes out, we want. Back in 1944, it was done through the doctor and an attorney. It was no big fancy thing. And the lady had uh, uh, gotten pregnant with me, my accident, and could not wait for nobody to know and get rid of me. So I came into this world with her energy of, hurry up, we gotta get rid of her, hurry up, we gotta get rid of her. And some people don't understand that when they come into the world, they already have whatever energy that they'd absorbed from their surroundings while they're in utero. And um, I actually work with people all the time with that. And it's super interesting because they remember. And so I've worked on that a lot to clear that energy. But then I'm given to these parents that are like angel parents. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful people that really taught me um, that, I that I was special, that I was loved, and gave me, my mother gave me all that she didn't have when she was a kid you know, that kind of thing, which has its own set of problems, you know, but it's way better <laughs> than most anybody else I know. <laughs> and I ended up being an only child, which is another, you know, little thing in there. But the thing they taught me was that everybody's always nice to me. That's what I learned as a child. And they never looked at anybody else in a way to look down upon them. They, they would help people, they would help the family, and they didn't make a big deal about it. And we, we had enough money to get by, uh, more than enough money to get by, but we by no means were wealthy. But I always learned that there was enough. If we were missing something, my dad would make something happen and it'd be, it'd be okay. And basically I never knew about it anyway. But I always had this concept of we're all one. And I'm not sure why that's so. Maybe because I was an only child and very protected. And I, I, I don't know. But I've always liked everybody. And everybody was always nice to me, even if they didn't like me. 
they were nice to me. So that that's that's a gift. I mean, that's just a gift to grow up knowing that that there's enough and everybody's always nice to me. Yes, indeed. A lot of people grow up and they don't feel that at all. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And so, uh, of course, I had to go to college. My mother would make sure you're going to college. There was never any doubt that you're going, that I was going to college. And I graduated from Kansas University back in the 60s. And um, that was a radical time to be going to college, too. You know, it was right before the crazy time. I graduated right about the time all the re riots in the streets and Vietnam exploded and all that. So I, before drugs exploded, I was never, I was never around that. It was never, yeah. Mm -hmm. And, and I'm, I'm grateful, you know, that I didn't have to make choices then like that. Right. But um, then I was a school teacher for five years and decided that, the public school system was not creative enough for me. <laughs> oh, I love it. And I was, I'd gotten married by then and we wanted to have kids. And so we moved to this farther out. And after my first son was born, the women in my neighborhood had figured, had found out that I had this training in tumbling and dance. And they said, well, why don't you just have all the little kids in the neighborhood come down and you can teach all the little girls to do cartwheels. And I said, okay. Was not even my idea. The biggest pivot of my life. And it wasn't my idea. Wow. And that's before I believed in any divine source. I was out there thinking I had to do it all by myself. Right. And if anybody talked to me about God, get away from me. That's stupid. It, you know, and, and, uh, but the good thing is God didn't care. <laughs> <laughs> We're here anyway. You're going along fine. And, and the thing that was never my idea that I had the perfect house for, and the neighbors knew this, I had a tumbling studio in my home attached to the south side of my home in these huge garages for 43 years, hmm. 43 years. 43 and then, years. And I mean, I, I literally had thousands of kids, probably tens of thousands of kids and parents that came through in those 43 years. And that became my identity. That became the family I never had growing up, being an only child. And to this day, they're still my family. They just, yeah, they just are. So that was my big pivot point that <laughs> the divine said, here you go, try this. So you're, you're in the midst of, so you're running a business, you're an entrepreneur, mm -hmm. you're a mom, you're a wife. They've got a, a, a few things going on in your life. Where, yeah. where, where does this, this affirmation email come from? Because I think a lot of people are, at this point, it, it's a, um, you know, it's not an unusual thing. It's not a, a terribly yeah. novel or new thing. But back then, it really was. There yeah. was a there was another email I remember get coming called uh, "Notes from the Universe" or something like that. Right, right. Company, right. Come in, tut. You know, and then yep. yours came in and Namaste. I'm like, so where did that? What's the origin story for for your affirmation emails? Well, by 50 years old, I decided I didn't know everything after all. Wait, I, I want you to repeat no. that if you could, please. Okay. I <laughs> When I was, when I was turning 50 years old, I decided, I realized that I didn't know everything and, and it wasn't working the way, what I was saying, the studio was working fine, but my relationships were not, mm -hmm. were not. And so I actually, um, my chiropractor said, Hey, I want you to come to this landmark education introduction. And I said, okay, I need help. From what he said, it was, you know, going to help me. And I got into that and it opened my mind to spirituality. Even though landmark, the landmark form is not about spirituality. They don't ever talk about it. It opened my mind that I didn't know everything. Yes. That led to finding 
um, Center for Spiritual Living, which is um, non-denominational. It's the Ernest Holmes teaching, Science of Mind. Well, I could wrap my mind around that because that was scientific. And I loved it. 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 I couldn't get enough of it because I knew it was, I, I knew, I knew it was my answer. Um, and so they teach affirmative prayer. And so when they started, when I, I started taking classes immediately and they taught me to do the five step affirmative prayer and I started writing them every night and I'd send them to my friends. And then they'd send it to their friends. And see another thing that wasn't even my idea. It wasn't my idea. We're it organically. There's a, a theme here, right? Yeah, yeah. A theme is appearing. <laughs> yeah. And it finally, it, and it, fi and it, it helped move things along faster once I actually believed that the divine was helping me. <laughs> and and commun started communicating with that energetic power that's always been there. Wait a second. I want to scratch you my head now for a second. <laughs> Well, things actually sped up and got better the moment you realized that the universe was working in your favor? Yeah. What a concept. <laughs> they ought to write Whoa. a book about that or something, huh? <laughs> Shocking. I have, there are people driving off the road now. Listen, just pull over, stop your car. <laughs> yeah. Earth yeah. shattering stuff. Yeah. So you you start writing these for your friends and they start sharing them with their friends. And then what what happens from there? Yeah, well, at first I was writing them every day and sending them out every day. And I did that for years. But it was because I needed it. Yeah. I was sending it out and getting good responses. And that felt good. But that's not why I was doing it. I felt I did it because I needed to be reminded and keep uh, keep my mind focused on what I wanted to learn. If you're teaching it, then you're going to get it. And if you're writing these every day and other people are expecting it, then you have to keep doing it. Or you don't have to, but I wanted to. So it only helped me by doing that. So you reading it and, and saying I like it and, and then getting other people to say, you know, whatever, that they like it. It wasn't like a Facebook like it thing. But, um, yeah, so that that kept me going because it's like okay people still like this and i still like doing it yeah and there came a time that i thought you know seven days a week is a lot <laughs> and this is after years and i decided okay i'm not going to do weekends and that went along for several more years five times a week and then at one point in time i said you know i just need to do this once a week and by that time, there were so many things like this coming at people yes. that they did have a lot of choices. They didn't, they didn't, they probably didn't even want me in their inbox every day. I don't know. Nobody ever told me that. But uh, so I went to one day a week and I'd send it out on Monday night. And I did that for another 10 years. And then one one week one night I said I'm not going to do it tonight, and I'd taken breaks before, you know, being out of town on vacation or some, but just usually just for a week. And then the next week I said, "Hmm, I'm not going to do it tonight either." And then the third week I said, "Hmm, I think I'm done. I think I'm complete." <laughs> Yes. And that's all there was to it. There was no plan ahead. No plan ahead at all. And that was, uh, what, six months ago or something like that. And then I wrote a note to everybody that said, you know, this is what happened. I decided I'm done. <laughs> I am complete. Thank you, for, thank you for, you know, wanting these to come in the mail for all, you know, on your email for all these years. And I got several people back saying thank you and including you and that's when i discovered you yes i don't know who these people are out there and i and i looked you up on you know then and found a ted talk or something that you'd done and i'm like holy moly he likes me you know <laughs> um and so it was it was 
it, it was good feedback at that time that I'd helped people. Yeah. You know, that people, people did like it. And it, it was good. Yeah, I think it's one of these, I don't know if it's an irony or a mystery or one of these just things about life that uh, is enigmatic, but we have such a bigger influence on others than we, than we imagine. Oh yeah. And, and maybe that's a good thing that our, that our, our egos aren't sort of uh, able to encompass the full uh, width and breadth of our, of our influence, because sometimes our influence can be pretty negative too. I, I, I won't speak. I mean, I won't say that about you. I know my own life. Yeah. I mean, I've hurt people and I've done things and I, I would think the ripple effect of that, I wouldn't, wouldn't feel great about if I knew the full depth of it. And, and on the other side as well, and I hope that the other side is quite a bit bigger. I mean, I know I've <laughs> been, been, like you say, working on myself and working on learning and sharing what I remind myself about. My morning rituals are all about reminding myself, you know, when, when before we hit the record button, we were having a little technical uh, challenges earlier. You asked me, do you, you know, why is it that you love your life? And, and I thought that was a really great question because not everybody asked me that. If you're like, hey, I love my life guy, you know, not everybody's gonna stand up and go, hey, why do you love your life, buddy? You know, even though I really wish people would do that. And I was so happy you did that. And you didn't say it that way. You was like curious, but I'm like, well, cause it reminds me of something that I want to be reminded of, which is my connection to spirit. It's my connection to my creator, to God. And, uh, and I do want to, if it's okay for just a couple of moments here, um, I want to talk God with you because I never talk God with anybody other than, um, a few very close friends, I suppose. Mm -hmm. And even well, then... Begin with, I don't believe God is an old man up in the sky taking, doing judgment and taking, doing a checklist to see if you get into heaven or hell. As far as I'm concerned, there is a heaven or, and hell, but it's right here on earth and we get to choose. Oh my goodness. Now, once we pass out of these physical bodies, uh, I, have, I have my own ideas of what happens then, but I don't know because I haven't been there yet. You know, but... <laughs> well... <laughs> But yeah, so God for me is just the universal energy of goodness. Mm. And there are spiritual laws that balance all this. And, and this isn't me, me saying it because I know it. It's because this is what I've been taught through science of mind. And this is what I believe because it makes sense to me that if this is all energy, the energy is going to balance. And if, if, if we are angry, we're going to get anger back. If we are living in fear, we're going to get more to fear. If we live in love, we're going to get love back. Now, that's the balance of the universe. But it's not God doing it. It's the energy of who we are as it works through us making it so. Law of cause and effect. Simple. What you give out, you get back. We've learned that since we've been kids. It's a universal law. It's like gravity. You can't yeah, yeah, like gravity. Yeah, law of attraction, all those things. Yes. Yeah. So, I, to me, if, if you, um, well, you were inspired to write what must be thousands at this point. I can't even imagine. You, have, you know, that's a question I have for you. I just dropped in my head, statistically speaking. Do you have any idea how many affirmations you have, you've dis disseminated in the world? Um, no. That would be, I'm curious. Are you they a little were, bit curious? I kept them all on my computer and then I got rid of a lot of the old ones. Mm -hmm. um, but I still have quite a few people keep saying, are you going to do a book? And I'm going, why? And the only reason I could think of why is for a legacy for my two granddaughters so they can, yes. they both, they, they both know this stuff too, you know? Oh my goodness. <laughs> I would love to see you do a book, Judy. In fact, I'll, I'll make a referral to somebody that if you have any interest, you can talk to about this. But Okay, we'll talk um, about that later. I, will, I would I just say... I not any interest in it. It just sounds like a lot of work to me. Oh, I think you've, <laughs> I think you've already done all the work. I think that's the beauty of it, is uh, that like we have our favorites. I will meditate on it. <laughs> I um, and, and Chelsea, our oldest daughter, and I were talking about this just the other day. We are like, you know, we have affirmations 
of yours that we've got in books and places where we we printed it you know not every one of them we printed but we printed them and put them on a wall or you know on a post-it thing or stuck it in a book is you know and um and so we all have our favorites i would say that among your your community which i think are is just i'll just use the word fans because you are a complete <laughs> and total rock star and <laughs> if ever anybody deserve rock star status it is it is you judy and okay. and that's the truth so um i would say that there's probably for the people that did follow for years or who knows even decades they probably got their their top 10 or something along those lines yeah it's, you're you're probably right yeah, yeah. and I uh people have said i've got a folder of my favorites and that kind of thing so yeah yeah, yeah you're probably do you, right do you have a favorite is i mean it's probably crazy question to ask you but um my uh, my favorites would be anything about releasing uh guilt releasing shame releasing resentment because it doesn't do us any good mm. and just things about letting go because surrender is a big deal and i'm very resistant to surrender so i've worked on that a whole lot of being able to trust and it's all going to be okay and you know stay in the moment and all that i tend to be a little bouncy so i don't stay in the, the moment present all the time seems <laughs> yeah so what do you do today i'm asking you a very personal question so you are writing those affirmations as a reminder for yourself to stay on the that path like yeah. you're saying being able to release things and let go of things as well um, and shame and guilt are terrible things to hang on to. They're very, they're very heavy energy. <clears throat> Michael Beckwith said, guilt always leads to punishment. And when you think about it, you're guilty in court, you go to prison. Yes. When you put guilt on yourself, you're going to punish yourself. You're going to put yourself in your own prison. And when people understand that, I mean, it's such an easy concept such an easy concept and it, once they understand that they can wrap their mind around oh maybe i ought to release this guilt and shame whereas before they felt guilty that they couldn't release it oh but i really did do that yeah but that was long ago and it's still messing your life up now you've already said you're sorry do you do that anymore well no i wouldn't do that again well then we need to release the guilt and that's what i do these days is work with people to do that and i'm not putting in a plug for myself on your show because i have plenty of people to work with i'm just saying it because people <laughs> need to know this kind of stuff and they don't and until they do they'll hold on to it and they don't know so they don't do it different they try hard bless their hearts yeah is there is there a i don't want to call it a secret because i know there's there's no easy at least i'm going to speak just from my own experience, there's no easy road to the things, to these kinds of things. It's a vigilance, it's a day by day, daily work that we have to do. And either we're yeah. putting our hands in the soil and tilling and doing the, pulling the weeds each day, the weeds in our minds and, and all these things, or we're not. So mm -hmm. I don't know that there's an easy answer, but, and the but is, um, is there something that, that you've found after all this time of working with people and the work you've done on yourself that is a bit of a hack, is a way for people to release or let go of things that, that might uh, just make it easier than it is for them at the moment? Because I'm sure a lot of people who are listening to this have done work on themselves. There's probably people who have gone oh, through yeah. the landmark and been to forum yeah. and been to all these things, yeah. and yet they're still holding on to some resentment from when they were 13 years old or when they were... 28 and they hurt somebody or so judy i'm putting you on the spot now let's pretend that everybody that's watching this everybody that's listening to this is is right now sitting there in front of you and is your client and they're holding on to something that feels pretty icky and like you said michael beckwith said punishment or guilt leads to punishment so they've got this guilt what do you, what do you tell them judy? the guilt that they have now did not start in 2019 it started way back when maybe like mine a lot of mine started in utero how, how do you uh, or you know kindergarten first grade how do you 
hold them accountable. They were doing definitely the best they could. They didn't know. Even if it was something that was really bad, like, you know, you, you, you cheated in your marriage or you killed somebody. You know, sometimes it doesn't do any good to hold on to that guilt because you're not that now. And I always say, would you do that now? And they say, well, no. Well, then why are you still holding on to it? You have to go back and help those younger selves. You have, and it's not like self-love or that. It's not, it's not that. It's love for that younger self. Because you ask people, well, how do you feel about how you, you know, what you did as a teenager or what they did to you as a teenager and how you reacted or whatever. How do you feel about how they were bullying you? They know it like that. They feel it like that. That's not in 2019. That's 40 years ago in high school. You have to go back and help that high schooler. You have to go back and help that, that one-year-old, two-year-old, three-year-old, that three-year-old that was an only child till that new baby came in and all of a sudden, mom is not having all this uh, attention on you and you're wondering what happened, even though nothing really happened. And, and the, the new baby is wondering why their big sister always hated them. You know, you have all this stuff going on, these dynamics that we don't understand growing up not even as adults. So my magic thing is to go back and help those younger selves. But if you want to hack, as you said, in the moment, what to do is you appreciate everything. And that's what you say. And I'm not saying it because you say, love your life no matter what. I'm saying it because that's the truth. And that's not, that's not an advertisement for you. That's just an advertisement for their lives. Yes. Mm -hmm you got me here i gotta tell you i've done this a few times and i have not been so you just it's so moving to, to see the energy seriously the energy that you've got for what you do and how you this is why you've helped so many people judy because you it's you embody it you're living it it's in it's in you, the cells of your being yeah and probably like you said those cells were formed long before you made your emergence into the into the world <laughs> yeah and, and this is and this is uh, i i feel incredibly grateful in this moment for you and i wanted you to know that that's why i wanted you're you welcome. to come on the show you're week. welcome that's yeah. that's all yeah. i want these days that's all i want is to like you, you do the same thing you just want everybody to have a hack to a better life and if you stay in claim, blaming and complaining and playing the victim and all that, you're not going to get there. But the people that are there, they're probably not paying any attention to us anyway. No kidding, right? Yeah. Um, our own little drama. We, we have so many. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we, make our, we make our drama so important in so many ways. Yeah. So. And... Um, Dr. Christopher Michaels, who's a, a Center for Spiritual Living, my teacher from, you know, the beginning 20 years ago, and is funny. He would always stand up on the, on the platform and, and when he'd talk about people that played the victim, and he'd, he'd call them the walking wounded. And he'd, and he'd say, you know, they're not awake. They're not aware. They don't know. They don't know. They know something's the matter, but they just stuck there. They're not ready to wake up. And if you try to wake up the walking wounded, you're just going to piss them off. Yeah. And it could get dangerous, too. <laughs> We've exactly. all seen that, right? We've well, all seen that. Like trying to. What you can do, you can be the example, but don't go, oh, I can really help you. You really need help. No. If they're not ready to wake up, you're just gonna, they're just going to defend themselves. But yeah. if they're ready, you know, then, then, okay, here I am. What do you want to know? Absolutely. Judy. And then I've you, got my, if they ask me. What's that? If, if they give me an opening and ask me like yes. you did, 
<laughs> <laughs> okay. What do you want to know? <laughs> what do you want to know? Oh my goodness. I, wow. Just, just priceless. Judy, your, your website, will you say what your website is? Uh, it's just my name, judywhitcraft.com. Beautiful. That's simple. Will you spell it for everybody, please? J-U-D-Y W-H-I-T-C-R-A-F-T. And some people are going, did she say witchcraft? And it's not witchcraft, but people think that. Then they remember my name. It's like, oh. I didn't pick that one either. Good job, God. You know? <laughs> Good job, God. I think this is going to be my new mantra today. Good job, God. <laughs> Good job, God. Yeah. Oh, it's killer. Oh, it's just beautiful. Judy, I have so enjoyed this conversation more than I can tell you. And I, I, Anytime, Adam. Anytime. <laughs> you know what? I'm, I'm looking forward to the next chapter the next installment and everything that's going on in, um, and you you've been i just realized as i'm talking to you what a mentor you've been and uh, i want to i want to publicly acknowledge and appreciate express my appreciation to you for that for being my such pleasure. a such a beautiful mentor um so folks um the full show notes will have information about judy and what she's up to and of course her website so if you want to check that out yourself please feel free to do so um and uh and please leave comments let us know if you've been been following along this uh these decades of beautiful affirmations and if you've got a favorite please share i would love to see some of your favorites <laughs> that would be terrific and as we close out today's show i just want to uh I want to remind myself, and Judy and I were talking about this earlier, and it's so important that we, that we have our own reminders. And part of how we serve the world is in reminding ourselves how to live good lives, how to live productive and happy and healthy lives. And so this is the reminder. We wake, first of all, we're going to wake up. That's the first thing I want to do is wake up, and, and I'll, uh, I'll piggyback what you said earlier, Judy, that I believe that part of our, our role here is just to wake up a little more tomorrow than we are today. We could do that. If all of us could just do that, then we'll all hit our own little tipping point. You know, and we don't have to be those walking wounded. And you know, to some extent, I think we all are a little bit. We've all got our wounds and, and we do best uh, with what we've got. So the, uh, the question is, are you gonna wake up tomorrow? Judy, I'm gonna ask you that question. I always ask my guests, are you gonna wake up tomorrow? Yes, I'm going to wake up tomorrow and it'll be the best I can be for that moment. And I know I can do something about it if I want it a higher vibration. And I know what to do. And sometimes I do that and sometimes I don't. And I just have to surrender and let it be okay either way what I choose for that moment. But I love saying in the morning when I wake up, I wonder what miracles are coming today. Because it starts the, the morning with the question. I wonder what miracles are coming today. And no matter if you believe any of them are coming or not, just saying it will cut the energy of going down the rabbit hole and give you a chance to go for those miracles. I wonder what miracles are coming today. Yeah. You know, it's beautiful. You, you brought up Michael Beckwith and... Um... And uh, uh, Reverend Michael was, was a guest on this show a few months ago. We had a wonderful conversation. I love him. He's, he's, a, he's a terrific man. And he has a waking question as well. So there's a lot of really interesting synergies that just happened. Um, and his question, if I got it right, if I remember it correctly, is what's my assignment today? He asks, that's his question to God. What's my assignment? Share, share with me what's my assignment. So that question, first question that we ask ourselves, and it's a curious thing about questions, I don't know if you buy this or not, but my, my view of it is it's, it has a relationship like cause and effect. You can't ask a question and not get an answer. Right. I never know what the timing is to the answer, when we're going to get the answer, but you, I just don't believe you ask a question and don't get an answer. So if you ask a question like, well, I wonder what miracles are coming today. Holy smokes, you're going to get an answer to that question. It's just a question, yeah. you know. Yeah. Wow, and, and Michael's question, what's my assignment today? And, um, and my question, a la the TED Talk, is, is, the, is the question of, you know, what if I decided to love my life, no matter what? 
no matter what, what would it look like? What could it feel like if I just decided I'm going to love my life right now, no matter what? So I'm waking up, I'm putting my feet on the floor, you know, the coffee's not made yet, or I'm running late, or, you know, I've got all these stress things going on in my life at this moment, whatever it is. But if you took that 10 seconds to pause and just ask that question, and, and it doesn't have to be that question. I proposed, that was my proposal. Well, what if I decide to love my life no matter what? Now, here's another question. What miracles are coming today? <laughs> it's just like 10 seconds. It's all it takes, right, Judy? Exactly, exactly. Mm. And it becomes a habit. You don't even have to remember it anymore. It just becomes a habit. And then you know, once it becomes a habit, that it's your go-to thought you got it. You're ready to fly. Oh, man. Yeah. I love it. Good job, God. <laughs> Way cool. Judy, I have so enjoyed this, and you're you're just amazing. Thank you for being a guest. I've enjoyed show. it, too. Thanks for asking. Way cool. Everybody, I love what we did today. Hope you love it as well. Let us know your thoughts. Either way, we'd love the feedback. And, um, well, we'll see you soon. Ciao for now, everyone. Thanks for listening, everyone. We hope you now have the tools and greater insights to navigate your own pivot. Help us inspire others by sharing this episode and leaving your comments over at adammarkell.com forward slash podcasts. For more tips, strategies, and support as you consciously pivot into a new business and lifestyle you love, join our Pivot community on Facebook at pivotfb.com.